Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I am sharing with you my diary entry for the week of August 6th through 12th. Today is Saturday, August 12th. So I am currently focusing all of my reading towards the Aurelium Magical Readathon prompts, which I think I'm doing pretty good. I also um, closed out the 801 readathon this week and so I've got quite a few things to talk to you about as far as finished reads so that's all of these and then I've got a couple of current reads on the go I have a very small knitting update for you and I have a little bit of friend mail to share with you so let's get into this week's entry so for the 801 boys love festival readathon I read I Cannot Reach You Volume 1 by Mika. I also read this one for one of my Aurelium Magical Readathon prompts, which was to read something that has a word from the title of the last song you listen to in its title. So the song that I had listened to was What You Want from FT Island. And so I picked I Cannot Reach You. Uh, this is a story about our two high school boys here. They um, go to the same high school, they're friends, and the brunette is more of a kind of, I guess, quote unquote, scary kind of person. Nobody really wants to talk to him. They think he's scary, but he's good looking. He gets a lot of attention from girls. And then the blonde is much more outgoing and much more of like a people person but obviously <laughs> he's not as admired by the girls and so the story kind of starts off where they're you know just introducing us to the relationship between the two of them and then you kind of figure out that our brunette character here um yamato <laughs> has feelings for our blonde whose name is Kakeru. And it's kind of a story of pining in a way. Um, Yamato can't like get his feelings across to Kakeru, but Kakeru is slowly like picking up on little things here and there and starting to question um, if Yamato has feelings for him, but you know, immediately kind of di dismisses it. But it's a little painful. <laughs> to read like the story is sweet it's a really sweet relationship that these two have um their dynamic is really nice but at the same time it's painful because he can't get his feelings across and even though the other one is kind of picking up on things here and there i'm not sure how long it's going to take for kakeru to like actually grasp on to those feelings and so with a title like I Cannot Reach You, I'm hoping it's not going to be like drawn out for a long time. In the back here it says, no matter how much time we spend together, I'll never become special to you. And it just kind of gives a really sad overtone, kind of. But I really enjoyed this volume. I'm looking forward to picking up volume two. And it helps satisfy some prompts for both the Boys Love Readathon and my Aurelia Magical Readathon. So... Looking forward to continuing with this series, I ended up giving this volume four stars. I did really enjoy the art style as well. It definitely has some uh, comedic moments, uh, um, which kind of helped break up like the whole like kind of sad elements for me. But I think it's just kind of me just feeling those sad like undertones and things. So yeah, for the most part, I wouldn't say that it's like overly sad, but I definitely feel for Yamato and what he's going through. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. The next thing I finished was also for the 801 Readathon and I finished volume three of Criminal Intentions. And this is actually season one, episode three, The Man with the Glass Eye by Cole McCabe. So this is a series that kind of reads like a TV show where we follow two gay detectives, Malcolm Kalaji and Song Jae Yoon. At the beginning of the series, they are paired together. Song Jae is actually younger than Malcolm, but outranks him. And Malcolm's kind of an old wolf 
he kind of likes to work on his own, do things by himself. He hates working with partners. Uh, but they get paired up for the specific case because young gay men are being murdered and it kind of hits close to home for both of them. And so now we're on their third case. Each book is a different case. Uh, this one was interesting though because this one kind of connects uh, other characters that we saw in the previous book, previous case, in with the case that's going on in this one. So I quite enjoyed that. It's definitely building the world um, or helps build the world for me. And this case in this volume has to do with drugs. I will say I am also enjoying the Asian representation so far because obviously we have Song Jae who is Korean. In this one we have a Chinese uh, guy who is introduced as one of the characters. Uh, we also have the coroner who is Japanese. And so yeah, I was very intrigued when I saw the Asian representation because for me when I'm reading things it's really hard to have more than just one. Um, so either it just be like Korean character or a Japanese character or a Chinese character, but there are three in here and Song Jae obviously is one of the main characters, but the coroner I have a feeling we'll also be seeing quite a lot because usually in TV shows like this we do see the coroner a lot. We find out what happens to the body and so I feel like the coroner is going to be, you know, a pretty substantial main main side character like and so yeah I was very very interested with all of the Asian rap in here um, and Malcolm is Persian and so yeah I'm really interested in this series I'm really really enjoying it um, something definitely happens at the end of this volume that makes me wonder what's going to happen in the next volume there are also some very steamy scenes between Malcolm and Song Jae in this um, episode, uh, not sexual, but steamy, uh, <laughs> but they were also undercover. So there's definitely some pining going on between the two. So if you're, you enjoy gay pining, you might enjoy that. Both of them have feelings for each other. Like you can see it separately, but it kind of like doesn't get across yet because, you know, they're trying to be professional. I do have a feeling they are going to get together later in the series. I'm just not sure how long it's going to take, but I have been really, really enjoying these. It's just like Criminal Minds, CSI, Law and Order, that kind of thing. Um, well, maybe not Law and Order because we're not really dealing with the, the cases in the courtroom. We're dealing with like the investigation style. And so, yes, really, really enjoying the series. Really looking forward to getting to the fourth one. But I'm going to have to, like, put that one on hold right now because the fourth one doesn't fit any of my Aurelia Magical Readathon prompts. But I will be getting back to this series as soon as I can. Really, really enjoying it. Okay. Now there's another one that I finished for the BL Readathon, BL Festival Readathon. Um... Cherry Magic, volumes 5 and 6. So this is 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard by Yu Toyota. This one's published by Square Enix Manga Rated Mature. So this series is about a dachi who has turned 30 and suddenly has telepathic abilities where if he touches someone he can hear their thoughts and finds out that Kurosawa uh, has feelings for him. And so this this series follows Adachi and Kurosawa's relationship. Now I read volumes one through four for the manga Pride readathon and I enjoyed it for the most part but if you had listened to what I had to say about my thoughts on that there was something that was going to bother me if it continued any longer. That actually got resolved in volume five so I was glad to see that. But at the same time, there were some other things that happened in Volume 5 where I was put off by their relationship dynamic. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to go into Volume 6 because I have it. Because I do like to read these two at a time. Because they're so short, they're like under 200 pages. 
And so it's not like a normal manga volume where uh, the volumes are like, you know, a little over 200 pages. And so I like to read these two at a time. In any case, glad that my kind of little hang up was cleared up in here. But like I said, I had issues with their relationship dynamic in here already uh, from things that had happened. And then we get to volume six, and I'm even more not into their relationship. I had originally rated volumes five and six both four stars, but after talking to my mom about my feelings on what had happened in volume six mostly, some of the things in volume five, I actually lowered my rating for volume six to a three. It made me really, really mad I didn't realize how angry I was about what had happened until I started talking to my mom and like really got angry. I was like really angry when I was telling her what was happening and I didn't realize that it had affected me as much as it did because when I was reading it, it didn't bother me as much. I mean, it bothered me, but not as much as it did the morning after after i had some time to think about it after i had had some time to let everything that had happened soak in i i for one think their relationship is moving too fast it's either that or the mangaka is not showing time progression very well because the things that had happened between volume five and six were, were pretty extreme steps in their relationship, like big steps in progressing relationships. And I just feel like between volume five and six, there wasn't enough to make it make me believe that they take things further. But that's not what really bothered me. What really bothered me was the fact that and I don't feel like this is spoilery at all. Um, but there are communication issues between Adachi and Kurosawa. Throughout this entire series up through volume six, I mean, Adachi, you know, he finds out that Kurosawa has these feelings. And throughout the time that they're getting to know each other, when they're together, Kurosawa is the one that's doing a majority of the talking. From the get-go, and when Adachi doesn't know what to say, he uses his ability to figure out what should be said. And I just, I don't feel like their communication is good. I don't feel like with the level of communication that they have, that they can make me believe that they're going to have a long lasting relationship. I also didn't care for how Kurosawa had gone about things after their big moment in volume six it just felt like he didn't care about the turmoil that adachi was going through upon realization of something uh, it just came off as him kind of being aloof to me and not that not that he was like giving adachi space to like freak out a little bit that's not how it read to me it read to me like he was just like, I'm just going to let him do his thing and do my own thing while he's freaking out. And I didn't like that either. So communication issues for me is a really big like detractor for me with any kind of book. But I find that a lot of the things that I read that have communication issues in it are contemporary romance. And that is why I don't read a lot of contemporary romance. Usually in manga, for me, it's a lot more palatable, which is why I will read it more in manga. But it's either that I have been reading too much contemporary romance between the Manga Pride Readathon and the BL Festival Readathon, where the stories pretty much revolve just around the romantic relationships of the characters. Um, unlike in like criminal intentions where we get the case the case is a big thing about these books 
and then the romance is like secondary or the pining or the romantic feelings or them figuring out their feelings for each other that type of thing is secondary to the case that they are uh investigating and in contemporary romance it's mostly about the evolution of their relationship and that's why i don't read <laughs> a lot of contemporary romance and i think the reason why this particularly made me so mad was because I've either, like I said, read too much of it or it's just that this particular miscommunication, not communicating, not knowing how to communicate trope is just getting to me as I get older. It's always been something that has bothered me, but I find that as I get older, I have less and less of a ability to be patient with that type of thing i don't know so i'm 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 becoming an old crone and i can't i can't tolerate that stuff anymore so i'm definitely gonna have to take a big step away from this series for a while i unfortunately think i have read a spoiler for volume seven from one of my friend's Instagrams. And it really was just a one sentence thing. But if that is what I think it is, then I'm really gonna be mad about the direction that this story is taking. Because for right now, for me, this couple has no communication. They cannot communicate. The, the chance that they had to be able to try to get around Adachi using his ability has come and gone um they didn't even give it a chance in, in here when they had the, uh, the chance to there was something that came up where they would have had the chance to be able to try to communicate with each other without adachi using his gift but that wasn't even able to be fleshed out and that's another problem that i have with this and so i have a really big problem with this couple now that being said I do enjoy the story between Suge and his potential relationship. I much prefer that story and I think it's because Suge started having feelings for this guy before things had happened um, with Suge. And so that's kind of like the silver lining for me. I'm not enjoying our main couple at this point. I find their relationship to be problematic. I find a lot of the things that Kurosawa had done in the fifth and sixth volumes to be problematic. But I am enjoying Suge's story with his potential love interest. And so we'll see where that goes. But I do have to step away from this series. I may not even pick it up until Manga Pride Readathon next year. It just depends. Um, I do have volume 7, and I had already ordered volume 8 in by the time I had read these two volumes and decided that I was mad at it. So, I will have up to volume 8. We're just going to have to see. I to, th to this day, it's been a few days now, and I've just been stewing on this. I keep thinking about it, and it keeps making me mad, and it's just bad for my mental health. And so I definitely need to take a step away um, from this because it's not worth it for me to be reading something that's making me mad all the time. Um, and I know that it's what is bothering me about that series is probably something that's more personal to me than to anybody else that's reading it. But it's making me very, very angry. And I cannot believe that the relationship that they have at this moment will last because of the issues that I have seen in these last two volumes. So, yeah, taking a big step away from that. So that was actually the last thing that I had finished for the Boys Love Readathon. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of sad that I ended the readathon on such a bad note. Considering, for the most part, I enjoyed everything else I read. Um, it's just that last volume, volume six, really upset me. And so, yeah, other than that, though, the BL Festival Readathon was good fun. I really, really enjoyed it. 
I enjoyed watching um, on Instagram and seeing everybody else's reads and their stacks and and things like that and yeah definitely hoping that the readathon will come back again next year it was a lot of fun and I had a good time I did pretty well on the bingo board as well actually filled up the card of slots for things read so I think I read nine things total is it nine I think it was I think there were nine slots so I read nine things I think that's good for the what eight days that we had the readathon so yeah I had a lot of fun and I hope that it comes back again next year and yeah, it's just unfortunate that I ended the readathon with, with a volume that made me really mad and is continuing to do so. But anyway, the other two things I finished uh, were for the Aurelia Magical Readathon, and that's volumes eight and nine of Phantom Tales of the Night. I absolutely love these covers, they just are always so gorgeous. Um, this series is by Matsuri, published by Yam Press, rated older teen. Um, let me just get back to this one for a moment. So this one is actually rated mature. Uh, through volume six, I still don't think that it should be rated mature because all you really see are naked torsos in like a romantic embrace. I don't really feel like that is enough to make something mature. Um, I would say older teen, if anything, but yeah, naked torsos in a romantic embrace. I don't think that's way too mature. So unless this gets super spicy later, um, up through volume six, I would say it's not. So anyway, back to something happy. <laughs> Phantom Tales of the Night. Um, so this story is a bunch of like different short stories uh, that involve this innkeeper here. This is our innkeeper who trades sanctuary for secrets. So even though these volumes are full of short stories, I think they call them enigmas. The chapter titles are named enigmas. Uh, yes, 35th enigma. So each chapter is an enigma. Um, there are several of them that connect characters to each other or um, like past the past uh, of the innkeeper and things that he's gone through and how that connects to other things that are going on in the present and things like that. But I actually had to read volume nine for my Aurelian Magical Readathon prompts because I needed something with a snake on the cover. And as you can see, there are several snakes there on the cover, but I hadn't read volume eight yet. So I had to read volume eight so that I could get to volume nine. I had taken a bit of time away from this series and so when I jumped into volume eight, I was a little bit confused. I recognized the characters, but I didn't remember what had happened with them in the previous volumes. So I was a bit confused going into volume eight, but everything kind of worked itself out um, as I read through volume nine. And I really enjoyed this. Uh, that being said, there is a little bit of a gross out factor in volume nine because of all of the snakes. It has to do with one of the stories that is going on um, and yeah it it was kind of gross um, <laughs> I couldn't look at those pictures for a long time but yeah it's definitely interesting what's going on uh, with the snakes and the characters involved with the snakes um, there's also something going on with one of the innkeepers, like helpers. So he's got two helpers, one's spider and the other's butterfly. Um, <clears throat> there's something going on with butterfly. I'm not quite sure what is going on with them, but there's something going on with them. And then there's also something going on with spider, um, which is a little bit sadder and you kind of know what's going on with spider, but it's still a little bit sad but anyway I really enjoyed these volumes once I got past my confusion uh, going into volume 8 and then the whole like kind of grossness with the snakes in volume 9 I still really enjoyed the stories I'm looking forward to, to more volumes um, I do think though that once I have everything and everything's fully published 
I need to go back and do a marathon read of the entire series because there are definitely things that I think I'm missing because of the amount of time that I'm taking in between the volumes. Um, but that being said, I'm still really enjoying it. I love the art style. I'm really liking all of the stories we get of the innkeeper in the past and seeing what they've been up to uh, in their life and how it kind of connects to things that are going on in the present. And yeah, so really recommend this series. But I definitely think that it would benefit from a back-to-back -back read of the volumes because I know I'm missing stuff and... There are probably some underlying things that I'm not connecting, but I'm still really enjoying what I'm reading. So I was able to finish that as well. So that is two, three, three classes I was able to finish uh, for my Aurelian Magical Readathon because I finished title contains a word from the song's title you last listened to. I always have a hard time phrasing that um, with this one. Uh, I did started before bed. I read. I did read uh, at a different place each time I picked it up. Since I only picked this one up in my bedroom, then I only did that. I think that still counts. I know there are some people that said that that doesn't count, but I don't think G is that uh, concerned about how we interpret things. Um, and then. Uh, snake on the cover so yeah I think I'm doing pretty good with my really magical readathon prompts so that's everything that I have finished so far now let's get into what I am currently reading so I have had an audiobook on my holds list from the library for a few months and it finally came through so I did go ahead and start listening to it because I didn't want to like push it off again uh, because it took so long to get to me. So this is not on my Aurelia Magical Readathon prompts or any of the stuff that I need to read, but it is Karen Slaughter's Triptych. Um, this is the first book in her Will Trent series. You might know the Will Trent TV show that is uh, was on last season. Um, so it's about... Will Trent, who works for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and he is like a prodigy. Um, he's really good at what he does, but he is also uh, dyslexic. He grew up in an orphanage, and anyway, in this book, he is working a case that has to do with women getting killed and their tongues are being like removed. Um, and then we also meet a childhood friend of his who happens to work at the police department who also grew up in the orphanage. And then we meet another detective. So this is basically like a murder mystery type series where we're kind of following Will and the other investigators kind of work a case. It's the kind of story that I really enjoy. I did watch the entire first season of Will Trent before this got to me. Uh, and so I was a little bit familiar with the characters, but I wasn't sure if the series was going to follow the books or if they were just taking inspiration or, you know, they're just using the character and doing different like cases and things. So I've had this one on my radar for a while. Uh, my friend Janie over at the Bookworms Buddy, she had talked about this series years ago and she really loves Karen Slaughter. And so I had put it on my to read list then, but the line for this book was always so long. And then I just never ever got around to it after picking this up at a library book sale for like 50 cents. Um, but when the TV show came out, it like renewed my interest in trying to get to the series. So I had put the audiobook on hold thinking that it would be easier for me to get through the book because that's kind of how I'm reading now. I'm doing a lot more audiobooks or combo reading where I read some from audio, some from physical. And so I thought it would be nice to try to combo read this. Um, this one is a bit longer. It's um, 484 pages, so it's 
not thin. <laughs> but uh, I will say that after reading the beginning of this book and having watched the TV show, I was a little bit confused. Uh, it come, It turns out that the first episode of the TV show is actually the second book. So I have a feeling there's something that's going to happen in this one, which is why they're not showing this particular case at this moment. Um, it is kind of gruesome what's going on. There's also uh, pedophilia in this case, and there's also... A, description of one of the characters being raped in prison um, one of the male characters getting raped in prison brutally brutally raped and uh, the injuries that he received from the rapes like plural um, so I can understand why they would have skipped this volume or this installment uh, but for Someone who's new to the series, who, you know, goes into a series that's named after one of the characters, you'd think that that character would be the first character you meet in this, in this volume, right? And it's not. <laughs> you don't get to meet Will for a few chapters, which was confusing to me. Even as someone who had watched a TV show, I think it was even more confusing to me than if I had just picked this up without any knowledge beforehand. But yeah, I definitely think something's going to happen in this one where that's the reason why we are starting with the second book for the TV show. But like I said, there are definitely some things in here. We also have cheating spouses, um, like I said, pedophilia, rape in prison. And this particular installment also kind of connects a really old case that happened years ago to the goings-on that is happening currently. So there's a lot of kind of facets to this first volume. I always say volume because I read so much manga. Uh, first installment. Um, so yeah, this one for me as a first installment is bouncing around a lot. It bounces around between the characters I don't feel like we're spending a lot of time with Will and getting to know him, but at the same time, I'm okay with that because I've already watched the TV show, so I've got some of that already. But I don't know how I'd feel if I had come to this series as someone with no knowledge of Will or knowledge of the series or things like that. So yeah, I am enjoying what I, I've read so far. It's definitely an interesting case. Uh, I think we spent a lot of time with past stuff, though. I know that it's going to make everything make sense once we get it all put together. But for a first book in a series, I definitely expected to be spending more time with Will than we have. I have read up to chapter 29 so far. I am on page 324. And I definitely feel like I barely spent any time with Will. Now where I'm at, we're starting to piece things together. We're definitely spending more time in the present, which is allowing us to spend more time with Will, who is definitely an interesting character. We're also getting a lot of his background, his uh, relationship with the other character, um, his childhood friend that he grew up with at the orphanage and how their relationship has been over the years and things like that. And so it is interesting, but I wish we wouldn't bounce around so much. I think now that we're kind of, we've kind of got most everything to be able to connect. I think we're not going to bounce around as much. So that will definitely help. I do have a feeling though, that I am going to enjoy the series more once we get through chap uh, installment two. So yes, interesting story. Uh, definitely not what I expected um, going into this, but it's still interesting. Um, and we'll see what happens at the end of this one. I should be able to finish that one up next week. So the other thing I'm finishing at the moment is something that I started for the BL Festival Readathon, and that is Fence Disarmed. This is the second book in the Fence novels by Sarah Rees Brennan. So these novels are based on the characters uh, 
from C.S. Picot's Fence comic series, which I haven't read. But we're following our four characters, Aiden, Harvard, Nicholas, and Seiji, as they and the rest of King's Row Academy's fencing team are going to a very prestigious fencing camp in France. And so this immediately follows the events of what happened in the first fence novel, which was Striking Distance, which I listened to during the Manga Pride Readathon. Unfortunately, that means that there is a lot of drama in this installment. Um, you remember what I was saying about contemporary romance? Contemporary romance. Um, and the fact that there are things that happened in the first installment that is making Aiden, our character here, lash out in this book is not helping things. I am enjoying reading this more than I am reading Cherry Magic, though. And I think it's because I give a little bit of leeway when the characters are teenagers. I feel like when they're teenagers, they're still trying to figure out how to communicate with each other. And, you know, it, there's still a growing process. And I feel like I give teenagers more of a pass because of that. Whereas when we're dealing with adults, I don't give them that much of a pass, especially older adults. <laughs> um, they should already know how to communicate with each other. And so that kind of thing with adults really ticks me off. But in this one, you know, they are having communication issues. Um, there's a lot of pining. Lots of pining. Uh, obviously, you can see these two characters here. Um, <laughs> there's kind of something going on between them. But right now, they don't look at each other like this uh, because of what happened <laughs> in the previous volume. Uh, but you definitely get lots of chapters with the characters so like let me flip to the beginning so there's not spoilers so um for example the chapters look like this chapter one nicholas and then you get a picture and then the next chapter is harvard and then you get a chapter so you're definitely bouncing around between the four characters so it's not as like concentrated the scenes between these two characters. Uh, but Aiden's definitely not handling what happened in the previous installment well. And he's lashing out the only way that he knows how. And it's not an easy thing to read. But at the same time, we're not like getting concentrated scenes with Aiden. And you know what he's thinking. You know why he's doing the things he's doing. And you also know why Harvard is doing the things that he's doing and there's an understanding at least for me as to why each of them are doing the things they're doing but they're just not communicating that to each other and so yeah it's okay though I, this is tolerable for me whereas with cherry magic it's not tolerable because i'm getting a concentrated dose of adachi and kurosawa in this one i'm not even like between the chapters, there are rarely times, I think, where Harvard's chapters are directly before or after Aiden's. And so we're not like getting concentrated doses of all of the drama. Then you've also got the two other characters, Seiji and Nicholas, who are also fencing partners. Uh, but there's something else that's going on with a couple of the other members that have come from other academies to this fencing uh, camp and then you know there's stuff that goes on at camps where there's training and you know there's there's a couple of fencing tournaments that have happened or I don't know sparring or would you consider that sparring um, not too too versed in fencing terms but We've had some matches, um, which is a lot more fancying than we had in the first book, but I've enjoyed having those. There's definitely a secret that Nicholas is holding that still hasn't kind of come out into the open, and I'm not sure that it will, considering how far into this book I am. I only have this much left. 
Um, and so I am on chapter 28, page 247. And it's, this is an easy read for me. Um, there are times where I definitely don't reach for this. So I skip a couple days here and there. But like last night, I, I read through 100 pages in like nothing. It reads so easy for me. And sure, you know, those scenes where Aiden was lashing out irritated me. The scenes where Harvard just doesn't communicate his feelings irritated me. But it didn't irritate me as much as Adachi and Kurosawa. And I think it's because they're teens. And I look at the way they communicate with each other differently than I look at adults communicating with each other. So I'm enjoying this for the most part. I'm enjoying the fencing. Um, it's definitely something that I felt was missing from the first book. And I'm enjoying seeing all of the characters kind of grow. There's definitely character growth between especially Seiji and Nicholas. They're definitely doing some growing. Um, there's definitely drama because King's Row is kind of the low man on the totem pole here at the camp. They're not very good. And there, you know, there are people there that are looking down on them because they're American, um, and they expected more from the Americans, but really they're they're not as good as they expected type of mentality. But there are some nice people that we've met from the other teams as well, and I'm enjoying kind of that whole like summer camp vibe that's going on. And so yeah, I should be able to finish this. Uh, this week as well. So hopefully things will work themselves out. And then I think I'll need to take a hefty step away from contemporary romances for a while. Because it's just getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's getting on my nerves. Um, you know, I don't read a lot of contemporary romance. I have read a lot more contemporary romance this year than I would say I've read my entire time on booktube. Um... When I was younger, I would read contemporary romance, but that's mostly because contemporary romance is a lot of what my mom read while I was growing up. So we had a lot of those types of books in our home. And I was like a voracious reader when I was younger. So I'd read anything and everything. And it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I started to become more picky um, maybe it was life experiences that kind of shaped the things that I started in enjoying and not enjoying reading. And it's been a while now since I've really enjoyed contemporary romance and novels. Uh, I definitely can tolerate it a bit better in manga. Uh, in fact, I, for the most part, when I'm reading contemporary romance, it's high school romance. And so I think that's, again, what makes it a little bit more palatable for me because I give teenagers a little bit more of a pass. But when it's adults, I have lots of issues. I, I don't know. I just don't have the patience for that type of stuff. <laughs> I almost said another word. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah. Definitely need to not read contemporary romance for a while um, which kind of upsets me because one of the volumes that I was anticipating for a really long time because I only get a volume a year of a series that I've been following for a long time I just got and I really want to read it but I feel like my how I'm feeling right now it's going to affect my enjoyment of it. And it's a series that I've loved for a while. I've really enjoyed everything I've read. Now, their relationship's not perfect either. But I don't feel like they have communication issues. So that's not one of the things that bothers me with them. Um, but, yeah. Anyway. I don't know. I may still allow myself to read it, but I'm definitely going to have to take a little bit of time away from contemporary romance, which is fine because the rest of the stuff I think I need to read for my Aurelia Magical Readathon prompts are uh, monster horror, 
I think my next audiobook is going to be Out of the Earth by, oh, who was it by? Jake Bible. And that is about monsters that come out of a super volcano and start wreaking havoc on society. So I have to read that for one of the prompts. I do have to read volume one of Inuyasha for my pet pick. That is romance, but it's like more historical romance and the romantic elements don't come till later in that series. So I think I'll be okay with volume one. And then I've got to read something with vampires in it. Um, I had put vampire dormitory. I think that should still be okay because that's not contemporary romance. That's supernatural romance. And it's not really romance, at least in volume one that, or two that I can remember. I think I read two volumes of that series. Um, if I have to change my selection for that prompt, I will. But as of right now, I think Vampire Dormitory will still be okay. Um, Full Metal I have to read for the Monochrome Manga Club. And that is not romance at all. At least not like solely romance. There are some like romantic things that ha come up but they're like not even close to being any like main part of the story uh, they're just kind of touched upon later in the series and we're not there yet at that point where they're starting to come up so yeah I should be fine I just need to really be careful about the things that I'm selecting to read because like I said Cherry Magic has been really, really making me mad the last few days since I finished reading that volume. And reading should not make me unhappy. <laughs> it's one of the things that I do for entertainment. And, you know, it's entirely on me for picking up something like that, I guess. But at the same time, I didn't know that it was going to affect me that negatively. Because I, for the most part, I did enjoy volumes one through four. So, yeah, a, a bit of a strange week, definitely, as far as uh, my reading has gone. I have enjoyed a lot of what I read, though. A lot. A lot. It's just a couple things, but next week will be better. Next week will be better. Um, the upcoming week, I do not yet have to start on the Monica Manga Club selections. Uh, so I'm free to read whatever I want, whenever I want. Obviously, putting my Aurelian Magical Readathon selections as a priority. So that's where my reading's at for now. I got a really long-winded on that. So let me just grab my knitting really fast. I don't have a lot to show you. Uh, my hands are still bothering me, but I thought that if I work something with a larger gauge, that maybe I could handle it. And so... I did a few rows of my uh, Mostly Ghostly, which I thought I should probably pick this one up because if I have any chance of finishing it by October, uh, this needs to be worked on. So I actually worked on this a few months ago when I was taking my class and I just never showed you any progress, I don't think. I don't remember. If I did, I didn't move the marker, but I was here the last time so I've done this much I am putting in increases on the sides to give me more of an a-line shape to the sweater uh, but yeah so far so good I'm just going round and round and round on the body um, so I've got this much from the sleeve uh, the bottom of the sleeve opening to the body so I'm doing okay. I can tell that my tension was a little bit wonky and I think that's just because I was having issues with my hands. I noticed it while I was knitting so I tried to tighten up my stitches and uh, anchor the yarn a bit tighter and that definitely helped. So it started to uh, fix itself which is great but yeah it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty even still. And I did go ahead and manually like pull on some of the stitches to try to even out. When I block it, it'll eventually even out even more. But yeah, so far, so far still really enjoying this one. I'm going to try to pick this one up a little bit more uh, this week and see. Because like I said, my hands are still bothering me. 
so that's where I am with that. Uh, the yarn uh, that I am using for that sweater is Lion Brand 100% Superwash Merino in a bunch of different colors. So this is the uh, sage color that I use for the uh, motifs. And then the body is this uh, charcoal. This is charcoal. And then the white I held double with this like uh, glow yarn, which is like cotton. Um, but I held it with a uh, nitpick stroll fingering in white for the ghosts because I thought that might be fun. And then for another one of the motifs, I have the Lion Brand uh, Superwash Merino in ice, which is kind of this bluish light gray. I do like the Lion Brand 100% uh, Superwash Merino. I've used it before uh, for my campsite cardi i think and it wears well i really really like it and so yes it's super affordable too so i definitely recommend if you're looking for a an affordable yarn to use check out lion brand on the website um, they have sales all the time and so yes really really enjoy that yarn i also have a couple sweater sweaters quantities of other colors for um, other sweaters because that's how much i enjoy that yarn so let's quickly go through my friend mail um, i actually got a package from my friend vanessa over at the crafty planty life podcast i'll link her down in the description box below definitely go check her out she does some knitting she does some cross stitch she does some plant videos and some vlogs and I've just really enjoyed getting to know her a lot better over the year, um, the last year. Uh, I've been following her for a while. Um, and just, you know, within the last year, I got brave enough to start leaving uh, comments on her videos. And so, yeah, it's been really nice getting to know her. And so we traded packages. Um, and she had sent me some wax, because if you watch my channel, you know that I... I'm really into wax melts and candles and things so she sent me some wax and then she also sent me these lovely knitted washcloths so I am actually not someone who knits washcloths and my mom is not somebody to crochet washcloths so these are the first washcloths knitted washcloths that I've I've ever had so I was so happy to see these in the package she sent and this color is absolutely perfect. Totally my color. So we got four washcloths. So she gave me this one, which I immediately took for myself. <laughs> we have this one, which is a nice like raspberry pink. There's this really cute Halloween kind of looking one. And then there's this multicolored one. And so, yeah, I was really, really excited for these. And my mom was really excited, too. And I told my mom, I'm like, you can take any of them, but not this one. <laughs> so this one is definitely mine. I don't know which one my mom has decided on, but this one was kind of like at the top um, when she was going through them. And so, yeah, we really, really appreciate the washcloths. Thanks, Vanessa. We really, really enjoy them. And we'll get good use out of them. So thank you so much. And so that is everything. I know I've talked a long time today. <laughs> but you know, that just happens sometimes when, you know, the things that you're reading, you have strong opinions on. And unfortunately, I had some strong opinions this week. So hopefully next week will be a better reading week for me. I'll definitely need to think about what I am reading as I pick things up and make sure that I don't pick things up that have the potential to make me upset. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's just unavoidable. But I don't foresee any problems with what I have planned for the rest of the month. So hopefully things will work out for me there. And that next week will be better. Unfortunately, the weather will not be cooperating with me because it's going to get back up into the hundreds. But, you know, it is what it is. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments below how your week went, 
have you ever had a really strong opinion about something that you read that kind of stuck with you and either made you really happy or really upset for several days after you read it? Let me know down in the comments below. And if nothing else, and you'd just like to let me know that you were here, if you could leave me a palm tree emoji down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out. And that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smiley always. Bye.